Welcome guys to Dogs of War YouTube channel. Today we're doing an unboxing of our the newest Netrunner Deluxe Box, Order and Chaos. Um, today we have Tree. Hello. Me, Jesus, and Angelo. How's it going? Uh, we're starting this first one's gonna be Corpse, and then we do a second part with um, the runners. So. All Wayland all the time. And some <laughs> neutrals. You better believe it. Yeah. yeah. Neutrals just Wayland waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> just Wayland waiting. They haven't bought them yet. You can't build a neutral deck. <laughs> yet. Yet. So, go up, That's tree. my prediction for this, <laughs> by the way. All right, first up, we have Argus Security, Protection Guaranteed. Uh, this is a Wayland Corporation identity. Uh, they're a corp. Uh, 45 cards in your deck, 15 influence, and the following awesome text. Uh, when the, whenever the runner steals an agenda, he or she must either take one tag or suffer two meat damage. If they take your stuff, either you know where they are or you start burning down their house. Uh, I think this is going to be the, go, the new go-to for tag and bag. Um... I don't even know if there's really that much to say about this one other than it's great for that uh, for that uh, archetype. Yeah. I think it's better than Grendel because Grendel was supposed to be the new tag and bag and it never kind of... Grendel was that we is in that weird place where it started with extra money and extra money should be better, but yeah. the, the influence Grendel was on that. Grendel was really only good early, early game. Like, yeah. if you get that yeah. combo in your opening hand, it's amazing. But after that, you kind of just start to peter out. This is going to be good throughout the yeah. entire... Yep. I think that, like the tree said, this will be the go-to, and yeah, I think even non-tag and bag decks. Yeah, I would I play so. this ID just to scare the opponent. Yeah, you know? well, and it certainly and makes taxing. them think you're tag and bag. Yeah. You know, yep. And uh, I, I like the fact that the tag is automatic. There's no trace involved yes. or anything else. It's, you take the tag or take the meat damage. And actually, I would not be surprised to see that a lot of runners would prefer taking the meat damage and floating a tag these Absolutely. days. Absolutely, I think. So. I think this is it's going to make playing against this be a lot like playing against Chinteki, mm -hmm. where you have to run with at least two cards in your hand. Uh, more than what you'd usually expect to be doing. Yeah. And it also, will, will want, if you run like a PE type of deck with a lot of ones, no, um, yeah, PE. Yeah. Um, with this new ID, I'll be like, okay, I put three servers open, three one agendas, go. You know, you if you steal them all, you cannot, you know, sustain yeah. the damage or whatever. You know, um, it, it's also a great way to blow through people's plascretes. I mean. Yep. Do you want to take meat damage while you're stealing agendas, or do you want to save that plascrete for maybe a scorch that may or may not actually be in my deck at that point? You know, yep. I think um, it's the I think it's very good. Yep, very strong. It's got freaking laser beams on the building. Yes, it's yes. awesome. The building has potentially maybe laser turrets on, its, <laughs> on itself, as long as, as well as a giant A at the top for Argus security, which is just awesome. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And they never sleep. They never sleep. Um, I got a second ID. It's called Gagarin yep. Deep Space, expanding the horizon. Is an identity corp, uh, 4515, as an additional cost to access cards in the remote server, the runner must pay one credit. And it has Latin. Uh, the Latin is sic iter ad astra, which means uh, then thus you shall go to the stars. It's from Virgil's Aeneid. Oh, wow. So. <coughs> There's your culture for the day. There's your culture for the day. Um, I don't don't think it's that great. Oh. Um because knowing you're playing this, I want to make sure I run off, run with an extra credit, you know. Um, it's taxing. Yeah, but... It is very... I think it's going to be very taxing throughout the game. I think this is going to run more in a Wayland deck that wants to play uh, asset-based mm -hmm. economy or asset-based things. And um, Wayland's gotten some really good assets lately, too. Yeah, absolutely. And there's probably plenty coming up really soon. Um, it's also extremely fluffy. I don't know if you guys have looked through the pamphlet yet or not, but the only insert for the corpse side in the pamphlet is actually about Gagarin Deep Space because Jack Wayland, the founder of Wayland Industries, no longer believes on humanity's uh, ability, ability to sustain, to sustain life yep. on Earth, and he dreams of going to the stars, oh. which is why a lot of the Wayland ice is themed after things in the stars and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so if nothing else, I'll play this just for a fluffy deck. Oh, and at this, point, at this point in the story, as I understand it, he's basically left the Wayland Corporation yeah. and and taken uh, a chunk of him, like himself mm -hmm. and people he knows into space oh, to, try, to try to colonize elsewhere. The art is pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Yep. All right. But this is kind of... You know, it'll be that one time where you make a run and you get taxed all the way into the server and you go to the end and you're like, crap, now I can access that and thing. Make there. NAPDs cost five. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty good. All right, and the last up, we have uh, Titan Transnational, Investing in Your Future. The most gorgeous artwork out of the three IDs, too, in my opinion. I could see Wayland cool, building. building a tower that looks like that. That yeah. is amazing. Um, this Big is a 4517, so two extra influence if you play with nice. it. Uh, whenever you score an agenda, you may place one agenda counter on it. 
I actually think this is fantastic. Wayland has some of the best agendas in the game that are fired off of having counters on them. Geothermal fracking? Geothermal <coughs> fracking is just one example. Uh, they have a bunch that are just really, really good with that type of stuff. Oh, um... The uh, fetch one. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. Plus your fetch card. Not, uh, Project Atlas. Project, Project Atlas, Atlas, that's the one. Yep. Project Vitruvius. I mean, they have some really good ones. Uh, Vitruvius is HP Oh, only, HP, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, so I, I like the idea that you not only do you have some extra influence to play with, which, you know, Wayland needs ice from other factions. They, they don't have the most self-sustaining in-faction ice, and they always want to kind of go out to grab some, or maybe they want to go grab a biotic labor from HP or something like that, and having the extra influence to splash that in is pretty good. And you get a good ability to go with it, so it's not only yeah. are we getting a, an extra two influence, but normally you lose a decent enough ability on the card when that happens, but instead you actually get one that's pretty damn good. And as you'll see as we go through the rest of the cards, um, there's things that interact with counters, especially on agendas, yeah. for example, yeah. where this becomes even more powerful. Um, this and could tag and bag just as well too. You know, you can go fetch now. And, With the yeah. extra seven two, you, that, that that's counts uh, uh, that mid season. A, uh, it's not an extra mid season, but it does get you an extra uh, sea source. Mm -hmm. Sea source two. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you can go an extra sea source if you want. Three. Mid season is like four, I think. It oh, four it's expensive. Yeah. If you do mid seasons in a burn deck for Wayland, you basically commit all of your influence to it. Mm -hmm. Or you just run one. Or you just run one. Um, I like this because I think it's cool that we're going to start seeing. Uh, I think this is the like one of besides you know, PE builds towards a style, but this actually kind of tells tells you what agendas you ought to have in your mm -hmm. deck uh, if you want to get the full advantage out of it. So let's just do right now the Devil's Advocate and compare this to the closest one that of this type of ID, which is near Earth Hub. Same card, same influence, but the ability is nowhere as good as Nier. I don't think anything compares to Nier right now. It's so you can tell right now that I'm curious if Nier, the popularity or the mistake of Nier Earth Hub affected this card. As so really you say it's not as powerful, but I would actually argue by scoring a single Project Atlas with one advancement token on it, as well as with this, enables a better win condition in the game than playing Nier Earth Hub. Because oh, two no. Atlas tokens means you go get a Sea Source and a Scorch and kill the part at any point in time. Literally, it, for no clicks, you just spend two tokens that you now have, Sea Source Scorch, you're dead. I, I mean, th that's a pretty powerful win condition for just for yeah, Honestly, agenda. I think, I think it's, uh, I think comparing IDs straight up from different factions yeah, is, is not really a fair thing to do. I don't know, it is a fair thing to do because it's, it's, each one is different things. I'm just considering the power level of each both. I just think that they did it in the Earth Hub and they're like, ooh, I think this was a mistake. Now this one was down the pipe right now. I bet you. I wonder, curious to see if this ability got nerfed a little bit because how strong the Earth Hub was. I doubt it. Honestly, I think this seems pretty thematic to, or this seems like a pretty solid theme um, that they decided they want to do something with agenda yeah. counters, and I don't think yeah. they would try to change that too much. All right, treat. Hey, look at that. We got uh, agendas now. <laughs> uh, that's a cool looking agenda. That take counters, nonetheless. <laughs> oh, look, look at that. <laughs> Uh, this one's called Firmware Updates. It's an agenda security. Uh, it's worth one um, agenda point. It requires three advancement counters. Uh, and its text is, place three agenda counters on firmware updates when you score it. Uh, and it, you can spend a hosted agenda counter to place one advancement token on a piece of ice that can be advanced. Use this ability only once per turn. Uh, I think this works fantastically with a lot of Wayland's uh, current ice pool. Yep. Um, you can use it with ice walls and Hadrian's and things like that that build up strength from it. Woodcutters. Uh, you can use it with yeah. You can use it with your woodcutters <laughs> and your Pharaoh, whatever the hell that card is that is not played. Um, you can use it with the new uh, is it Wendigo and yep. such, all of which change all types. Yeah. Uh, you can change types on a uh, on one of those when your opponent hits it. Which is fantastic. So your That's opponent, hit, your opponent hits it, goes and fetches a breaker for it, you can pop up counter off of here and flip it back and say, yeah. no, that breaker doesn't work anymore. Well, it screws with math, too, which anybody who's listened to any of our reviews on the cast knows that that's one of the things I love the most is screwing with math in the no, middle of runs. Bump the strength by one on exactly. ice, all of a sudden it's, yeah. You counted those credits, now you got to actually account for the fact that I have three or potentially four extra strength just sitting over here that I can throw out in the middle of the, the run. The problem is the only once per turn, slows that, it slows down that math, but True. it's still... You force them to spend ex to have extra credits available, mm -hmm. which you then can choose either to force them to spend or not, and it doesn't cost anything to do it. Um, I don't know if this may if this beats any of the other one point agendas. I know Posted Bounty is the big winner uh, when yeah, it comes tagging. to tag and bag, and Hostile Takeover is my favorite agenda in the mm -hmm. game just because it's such a strong one turn play. True. Yeah. Um, but it's it seems this like a solid thing that will. I would definitely play it in, um, I'm going to keep this face up because I'm going to forget what it's called, uh, Titan Transnational, and it might make um, might make the deck in one of the others. Well, the other cool thing, too, is when we get to the ice, there's a lot of ice in this set that lowers their res cost by 
X you amount for each counter on it. Yeah. So so this can be economy. Yep, economy. That's pretty cool. No, I think it's it's Look a good card. <laughs> it's a good card that uh, promotes a new type of deck building, and that's what I like about it. You know, or it, it takes away the scorch aspect out of it. It takes away the um, economy aspect of the other one in a different way. Too. Well, if you go backwards too, it works great with because we built it. Which yep. may come back because those reoccurring credits now that you have for advancing things, and we're now getting a lot more advanceable stuff within yeah. Wayland. Commercialization decks. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can start seeing some stuff like that come out too. Basically. Okay, I got a Glen Station. It's a four cost, two agenda points. Agenda? Uh, it's an expansion. Um, Glen Station can host a single card. One click, host a card from HQ face down on Glen Station. Another click. Add that car. Add a card on Glen Station to HQ. Um, I love this card. I absolutely love if this you, card. I guess it would be good with. Uh, oh, you have to look at your uh, at your deck, know what cards is there, and host. No, oh, HQ is your hand. Never yes. mind. Oh no. Okay, it's a lot better. I thought for some reason I thought excuse me. <laughs> Never mind. Nope. Oh no, it's good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know the runner can get to my hand this turn. I have an agenda hosted here, um, or have whatever I want them to 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 see. You know, um, you can even put for Waylon. How many times? Uh, store, you can store a scorch. Yeah, store a scorch. So they like, oh, he doesn't have the scorch in his hand, or if or whatever. To just just hiding information. Um, but the main thing I think will be agendas to store it here. Yeah. You know. You put the agendas here and wait until you're ready to score them. I've already seen you know? people talking about building decks with the most minimal amount of agendas you can fit that includes three copies of Glen Station. To have the three pointers And to move the three pointers out yep. of them. So the runner doesn't necessarily know how many agendas are actually in your deck. Yeah. But you score two Glen Stations. Let's say you can't really advance that 5-3 because it's not safe. You just throw it over there until you have a server that's built to support it. Yeah. Oh, well, now it just sits there. And there's really only two other agendas left in my deck at that point, you know? Yeah. Um, so no, because you only need two of this and a three point. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty cool card. Um, I, I like the fact that if you score it out early, it gives you time to build a scoring server, maybe that you want to drop something down in. Yep. Um, yes, cost good. I like the four. A three two would have been too powerful. Yeah, I think I think most of the three twos at this point are, are looking too powerful. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways now that we're starting to see with the runner to be able to trash cards out of the corpse hand. Yep. So if you are running tag and bag, for example, um, maybe you don't want your scorches to go into your discard file. Yep. So if you can host them safely over here, then you know they're protected and you don't have to worry about it. So. I definitely think it's going to see play. Yeah, oh, I think sure. so. And I like the fact that they're continuing the the name stuff after astronauts theme. Yes. For the space stuff, which is pretty cool. All right. The big one. Uh, this, is, this is government takeover. This is a unique agenda. Oh uh, nine advance for six points. Uh, it is an expansion agenda. It's limit one government takeover per deck, and you can click it to gain three credits. Um, this is probably one of my favorite cards in the pack, hands down, simply from whoa from, from two fashions, right? Uh, I, I'm just going, not even about the card itself, but uh, the artwork is probably one of the best things I've ever seen in Netrunner. I would die to have a playmat that has this art on it. But what Waylon says in the fluff text is amazing, which is it is essential to liberate a populace from tyranny before that tyranny takes root. Which is so weird for Waylon to say because they're this huge megacorp that is almost tyrannical in the way they do things anyways, yet they specifically talk about having to liberate peoples from tyranny before that, that tyranny can take because root. Because they in want the to populace. become the tyrant. Exactly. Which is um, awesome. Now, from a gameplay standpoint, I actually think this is really cool. Um, if there is one faction in the game that can build a server that you're never going to get into or it's going to be damn near impossible to get into, it's Waylon. Um, and to be able to fast track this out early game when you know the runner can't get into that server and score this it's is huge. going to be huge. Um, I've already seen people putting decks together to use off the grid as the way to protect oh. it. Um, Waylon can keep you out of HQ if they really, really want to, especially early in the game. So if you can get it off the grid res with this installed and an HQ that you can't get into, period, you will score this agenda out. And Trick of Light makes it even easier. We have all these things that lets us put as advancement tokens out now, and now you can just Trick of Light them over to this to get the extra points you need. I think you're going to see this t see play, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing win tournaments at some point in time. The only problem I have is 
the runner stealing it. I want to sure. see a, I want to see a table flip after a runner steals this on like a turn one like Maker's Eye run. Yeah, I, it's, 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 it's the risky it, run. I just it's a huge it. it's, risk. Oh, it's awesome! It's awesome though. But if you could score like if you score this thing, first of all, you're like a turn away from winning with yeah. like a hostile takeover. But if not. Oh, I'll just click out nine credits. Thanks. Yeah. The <laughs> odds of the runner pulling this though out of your deck are so marginally slim. It will it happen? And, it and will. It will eventually happen. But if you look at the statistic one four, odds, one in forty. One in well, one in forty. Yeah, forty-five or well, you're playing 40 fifty-four, you're playing 49, forty-nine. 49 yeah, you know, yeah. whatever you're playing yeah. at. I mean, mathematically, the odds of them pulling it are so low that the risk is minimal at the early game for them to see it. Now, of course, the more cards you draw to your deck, yeah. but ideally you're running three fast tracks as you probably, you do want to get this out of your deck as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, if nothing else, you run it with the other one, you fast track it in your hand, you pitch it over there and say, well, that's one. Hold on, Gagarin, and that's six points they can't get. Yeah, yeah. well, I just thin <laughs> my deck of all these agenda a, points that are not there anymore. That's mo this is also, this is in a, this is almost a third of your agenda points. Yeah, in that, card, that's which which is a good thing about it. That I like. It's thinning your agenda pool, Because with um, but three Gagarins and this, that's four agendas that have put you at 12 points already. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. And now it's actually three that are less so in your deck. Plus probably eight or nine agendas total in your deck. Which is yeah. awesome. Yep. And I love that also that they're breaking the mold of having a higher than three. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is the, and the nine is, the nine is not insignificant. Like that's, that is, you play it down, and that is four turns of just dumping tokens on it. To well, get and the important thing to note is, as we're going to see, there are pieces of ice that now allow you to put advancement tokens on cards that can be advanced. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, one of them doesn't actually specify it has to be a piece of ice. So there's other ways to get advancement tokens on this guy. You've always had the, uh, there's an there's a NBN card, that uh, mm -hmm. NBN ice that does that from the course. Yep. I can't remember what it's called because no one really plays around here. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I yeah. just can't remember the name off the top of my head. And the good thing about Super it is spiky looking guy. Yeah. Yeah. that even if you have a sand sun out and three biotic labors, you still can't score it. Yeah. Yeah. No, they made it you hard, know, but so the reward for scoring this yeah. is huge. Three credits and six points is just amazing. So this is me now, right? Yep. yep. High risk investments. This sounds like some whaling goodness. <laughs> it's worth three agenda points. It requires five advancement tokens. Uh, it's an agenda expansion. Uh, place one agenda counter on high risk investment when you score it, or two if you're playing Titan Transnational. Mm -hmm. uh, spend a click and spend the hosted agenda counter to gain one credit for each credit in the runner's credit pool. So good. Um, yeah. They account siphon you. That's cool. Next turn, I'll take. I'll I'll get all of that money back. <laughs> you don't steal it from them, but yeah, you generate that much. Um, in a deck that wants to be run, if you're uh, if you're playing Wayland and you want to be running three point agendas, I think this is better than some of the other options they have. It's yeah. definitely better than Priority Wreck. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. And it you know as a once per game or twice per game huge bump. It doesn't force you to do like crazy things just like uh, however much money they have they spend two turns building up to try to get into your server all of a sudden you have that much money and you can just you know, yeah there's you all know, your ice you can go exactly crazy. you have all the unrest ice that you installed and now you think they're going to run because last turn they took all the cash off katie or they yep. opused four times oh, or man, whatever if they take all the money off katie jones you'd be like thanks that's i appreciate that yeah <laughs> it's mighty kind of you so I mean, it's you do good. you you spin a click take the use the counter then you kill Katie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's very Wayland. Like uh, they've knocked it out of the park with these agendas. They're very, very yes. Waylandy yeah. in there. And again, like, and even even in the title, high risk investment is, mm -hmm. you know, three point agendas are always a risk. Yep. And if you and and again with this, it might sit there. If you're playing against Nasir, this card might sit there and be worthless the entire yeah. game. Sure. If he's never above three credits. Yeah. Or two credits or one credit on your turn, but it's still three points. It can still pay out. And I love that the guy has built a house of cards. Cause yes. That's, <laughs> Because it could come crumbling down at any yeah, moment. Exactly, like, just like any Trust high risk me, investment. I and, know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, and the flavor text is perfect there. That'll okay. be uh, that'll be my famous last words when I build the deck with like four agendas in it. Be like, trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and when I turn one, feel that six point agenda <laughs> off the top. Be like, yep, you sure do. Um, Constellation Protocol is a zero cost asset. When your turn begins, you may move an advancement token from a piece of ice to an installed piece of ice that can be advanced. For the trash. <coughs> to influence it's good it's good it's um i like it's cheap and it's expensive to trash and it is just move around tokens within it between your ices build, it builds into that glacier style deck where you're trying yeah. to build up your your ice as big as you can it's super important for the ice that's in this pack too because most of the ice in here is lowered its res cost by each advancement token on it so once you've res that piece of ice you can then move all those tokens off and start yeah. redistributing them Absolutely. on pieces that haven't been res keep moving which i think down. is fantastic Decent card, decent card. Uh, all right. Yeah, very good. Next up, we have uh, Mark Yale. 
He is a unique uh, asset. He's an executive. He's one to res, three to trash. Uh, whenever you spend an agenda counter, gain a credit. And then you can trash him or use an agenda counter and gain two credits. Um, How do you spend? Oh, so from the agenda. Yeah, so you can take, instead of using the agenda counter token to do whatever the agenda says it can do, you can use that token instead and use so it So whenever you credits. play an agenda, it doesn't do nothing. Yep. This gives an agenda counter, which yep. you can use you this can then to use get this it to spend it. Um, again, and also, note that like if you spend the agenda counter to gain two, you're getting another uh, one yeah, from this tank, yeah. so. so the cool thing about him is is he's going into this new Wayland playstyle we've seen with like the outcome of like Blue Sun, for example, which is I need to be able to do something on my turn that I need an extra quick burst of credits from. So whether it's bouncing a piece of ice or now, it's I'm just going to use this agenda token over here that I don't necessarily need right now to get this sudden burst of credits that I need to like scorch you or sea source or score yeah. out an agenda or something like that. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, you can he's, do this on your opponent's turn. Yeah. Like, if you yeah. need to res some ice. Exactly. He's uh, one influence, so he plays well in a lot of other decks. I don't know that you would ever, for example, play it in MVN and use an Astro Skip token, but, you know, there's Probably other... not. I have a Trivius token, and well, if you overpay exactly. for and you don't need anything, or... I mean, there are some token... House of Knives. Agenda, House of Knives. House of Knives. Maybe yeah. the one debt damage like, isn't worth it, and yeah. you yeah. need the credits instead, so... I mean, there's something to be said there. Um, he's cheap. He's got a. He's cheap. He's one high. influence, so it tells you that the the mentis to, to be yeah. splashable. His so, face, his face kind of unnerves me. I don't know why. It's just kind of <laughs> weird looking. I think it's because the circle behind his head makes him look like he's fake. Makes it look like his head is off center too. It's uh, almost like true. his head was pasted on and like they photoshopped in the background. <laughs> and they might have. Was it me? Yes. Yeah. You get the cool card. Space camp. Yes. <laughs> uh, zero cost asset ambush. Uh, it costs three to trash. It costs one influence. Uh, if Space Camp is accessed from R&D, the runner must reveal it. Uh, when the runner accesses Space Camp, you may place an advancement token on a card that can be advanced. Like your 6-9. Yeah, like your 6-9 <laughs> or uh, any, piece of, uh, any piece of ice that can be advanced. Uh, Waylon gets a trap. Uh, it's a trap that is very fluffy to them, even though it doesn't do meat damage. Because uh, yeah. you'd expect the Waylon trap to be like, ah, car bomb, surprise. Yep. Uh, but instead, Space Camp is uh, is cool. It advances your, uh, pushes you into um, putting more advancement counters out there. No, so yeah, what I like good. about this is, as the runner, how often <coughs> are you really going to spend the three credits to trash this? Oh, God, never. Exactly, which means it goes into my hand after I draw it. Now, every time you run my hand, if you pull this, I get to advance something Actually, on the board. Actually, in, in that case, I probably trash it every time. Yeah. Yeah. Have, uh, or at least, yeah, the first time you play it, you won't trash it once, and then you'll sure. be like... Oh my god, what am I doing? I keep pulling the stupid space camp. And, and it works out so, of out of archives. Works out of blue sun too. So think about this. I install it, right? You run on it, I res it, you don't trash it, I return it back to my hand, and now it's in my hand again. Now I shuffle my hand, I play some other cards out, you run on it. Like you could do some really interesting things with this, but you I could. think it's really cool. Yeah. And it's again, one splash, which means, you know It's mint. Yeah, you can you can put it into other factions without too much heartache. Played in a Jinteki trick like that, that guy. Supposed. Talking about splashes, card this card you're not gonna. Yes, yeah, so you will not splash this card unless you're um, desperate. It's three cost. The board, it's uh, unique. Axe access um, executive. Um, it's five influence. Each agenda in the runner score area is worth one fewer agenda point. Yes. Insane. Awesome. Um, but. If the board is trashed while being accessed, and it is uh, added to the runner score area as a two-point agenda. And all of a sudden they get all them agenda points back. <laughs> yeah. And they get all their agenda points back. Yes, correct. And it's so seven to trash. the other one you have installed. <laughs> oh. um, I think it's a pretty... I love the design. I love the card. Um, it's This card is a card that you make a deck around. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Waylon has enough one-point agendas to be able to do... Imagine having a ton of one-point agendas. Between Wayland and Neutral, I think you can. You, you can? can? I think so. Yes. So imagine making like a very cheap one-point agenda deck, and which you have like three of these or what? No, one, one whatever well, amount. You put, you, yeah, you, you put, res one of these. Now each time they steal an agenda, they're worth nothing to this them. This screams Argus security all over it. Steal my one-point agendas. Take a tag. Take do meat damage. Yep. They're not going to be worth anything to you as long as I have this res. And you, and you don't even have to res this until they're actually in a, close in like a threatening position. If they have five yeah. or more agenda points, okay, yeah, by the way, now you have zero agenda points. Have a nice day. Yeah, you know, you could host this on the agenda and then move it back to your hand and install and res it when you need it. Yep. Uh, you could drop it on off the grid, which I think off the grid is going to see a lot of play with some of this stuff that's coming up now because yeah. now there's a lot of good reasons why you don't want that remote ran on. That's not just there's an agenda there. Yeah. And this is one of those perfect examples. Like, now you have to go through this stupidly punishing HQ server 
just to then run over here and spend another seven credits to try to trash this. Having played some of the other executive cards in the past, um, ha I played Haas and I've played uh, the Jinteki one. They never really felt like they were worth it. I'll be curious to try out this one no, to see no. if it's... This one promotes deck building, and then I like it. I and like it's it important lot. to note, oh, other, it's uh, while being accessed. So yeah. it's not trashed if you like, use like a singularity. It's not trashed if you yeah. were to imp it. It, Correct. Well, no, imp it would because you have to access to imp. Singularity, you don't access at all. Correct. Um, no, but while it's access, when you go to archives, you're still accessing. Yes, you do. So uh, you just, but you cannot trash from But you archives. can't trash from archives. Oh, it's Once true. It's you're, right, you're, right, you're, right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, I think it's a cool card. I think we're going to see some pretty cool stuff come with it, hopefully. Uh, my, my only issue with it is that for some reason that Wayland logo looks like a WWE logo. <laughs> so it's like the board of pro wrestling. Well, I like that. I, like, I think it's because it has the three lines around it that looks like a wrestling, like there's uh, a wrestling okay. ring going. It is on cool that some of the people are holograms though that are attending the meeting. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, next up, we have Asteroid Belt. This is our first piece of ice. Uh, it is a nine cost, six strength barrier that screams Wayland all over it. Um, Asteroid Belt can be advanced, and the res cost is lowered by three for each advancement token on it, and it ends the run. Uh, so basically, this ends up being a six strength barrier that more than likely you won't pay more than three credits ever to res, and yep. that works out really well. I'll spend I'm, three credits and three clicks to res it. Sure. Or, it de or less, depending on what other stuff. You think yeah. this will see Blue Sun? Um, Blue think Sun, you, yeah, maybe. Um, the high <laughs> credit the cost really is matter. basically generating net net income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? um, again, I think because we built it, it's going to see is going to come back again because those extra advancement tokens are great. Yeah. Um, you have things like uh, the root. Um, what's the other one that you can install and use it to advance? Uh, there's an old Wayland asset that allows you to use the advancement tokens to advance ice on the server. Um, we've got more in this pack that yeah. do it. So I, I think all this stuff is, is really building up to something really cool which is Wayland's going to be splashing a ton of trickle lights into all their decks sure. now, and they're going to be using commercialization again, which, yeah. used, you know, commercialization was really underrated before, but that's because it was really hard to get value out well, of it. All you, did, well, all you did was put, you're basically you're investing into the commercialization yeah. by building up either an Ice Wall or a Hadrian's and hoping it didn't get trashed. Exactly. And the problem is, is back then you had to, like, get that ice sure. to be able to yeah. use this card. Now with... You know, you with this, build, you probably build an entire deck where all of your pieces advance. And that's the thing where I like it because it's, it's something new, and it's now helping Blue Sun. It's helping an old ID yeah. that was kind of you know forgotten. So now that ID is becoming more powerful because now that ID is basically saving you freaking three yeah. credits. It, I think they're great, and um, they snowball right. So as, as we saw with uh, Constellation Protocol, you know, once you've rezzed one with the three. Yep. You can just start moving those credits yep. to other ones, and it's like a snowball effect. That, I'm so excited. Yeah. I want to do that mechanic so cool. <laughs> so fast. All right. Uh, so we have <coughs> another space-themed ice. Uh, this is Wormhole. Uh, Wormhole is a code gate. Uh, it has nine cost to res, seven strength. Uh, Wormhole can be advanced, and its res cost is lowered by three for each advancement token on it, just like Asteroid Belt. Yep. Uh, and the subroutine on it is, is something we may not have seen before. Um, um, this, feels, this feels like a first. Uh, it says its only subroutine is one. Uh, resolve a subroutine on another piece of resed ice. That's so good. I think that's pretty cool. You can mimic. Uh, you can. There's so many things you can do. You can mimic it on the run. That's the obvious one. Sure. You can mimic brain damage. Or, you can actually, you can mimic brain damage or meat damage. Net damage. Um, uh, program trashing. Hardware trashing. Yep. Uh, if you have like a Taurus installed, Taurus was the one I was thinking of. I'm gonna trace you twice. And check it out. We're gonna, yeah, check it out. We're gonna just trash to your thing. The only You're problem is, is you have to have those ice already red. Sure, true. But so this is like a late game ice. So if you get it early on, it's nothing until. Oh. Unless yeah. you res the ice wall or something. Oh, yeah, you forgot to install a code gate breaker, but you got a sentry in my but other one. But that's the no code gate yeah. strength seven is it's yeah. hard. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, suck it, Yog. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Especially um, if you if you noticed in worlds. There were several decks not running code gate breakers. They're running David and stuff like that. No, no, yeah. they, they were running like main server code gate breakers, uh, but there was no nothing for the exactly. They were running the cube thing, or whatever uh, for passport, yeah. passport. So you know, I like having these strong now code gates that punishes those type of players. You know, and again, the artwork is psychedelic as hell, but it's so it's a cool. wormhole. It should be black. Like no, that would be a no, black, that would be a black oh, hole. Oh, black hole. My bad. But like all these, all Worm these space themed thing. cards. Like I, I mean, I uh, grew up in a very space heavy town, and to see these in a game now is just so absolutely amazing. It actually looks like the flavor text of the four space themed ice may actually like play into each other. Uh, his belt of stone did shake and shatter as through the door of light he came. 
he bent, bent his, his bow of stellar matter. Wow, and seeking yeah. prey, he then took Boom. aim. That just happened. That is awesome. That's cool. That's Tree awesome. just blew our mind. I didn't even notice Boom. that. That is so cool. The hidden little things. I read the flavor text. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> I got, it was my turn, yeah? Yes. Nebula. Uh, it's a nine res, cent ice, sentry destroyer, five strength. Uh, Nebula can be advanced, and its stress cost is lowered by three for each advanced token in its treasure program. So they have one for each of the yep each yep each of the barrier yep. Yep. yep and you can end the run you can trash the program and they're and all the same cost steal and end the run or trash the program. Um, what can I say? It's, you know, it's like the same thing and as the other. <coughs> they're all yeah. appropriately strength balanced that the hyper efficient breakers are still expensive enough to use on them that you're going to tax the runner, which I like. Yep, yeah. and also note that uh, as always, sentry is the low strength, code gets the high strength, yep. and barrier is the middle. Yeah, keeping the theme. If only there were cards in this pack that allow you to adjust the strength of ice. If only. However, we're not there yet. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Orion. All of them. So this is a 15 cost, which means it's up there with Janus, Wotan, and um, the wall that we've all been playing in Blue Sun. Who's Hadrian's. Had not Hadrian's, the other one. Curtain Wall. Oh, Curtain Wall, yeah. Yep. Curtain Wall's the 14. So uh, one of the most expensive pieces of ice in the game then. Uh, it's 15 cost. It's unique. It's called Orion. Uh, it is all of the ice types, so it is a sentry code gate barrier. It is 8 strength. Uh, it can be advanced, and its res cost is lowered by 3 for each token. Uh, it has 3 subroutines, trash program, resolve a subroutine on another piece of ice, res dice, and end the run. What does he do? He does everything all that all three of the other ones do. Combines the asteroid, the wormhole, and the nebula. Yep. This is pretty cool. Amazing. And seeking prey, he then took aim. Yep. Um, this is amazing. You will see this in a lot of Wayland decks that are big on money, which we are on the advancement side of it. So Blue Sun, I will definitely be adding this to my Blue Sun deck. Um, there's absolutely no reason not to run this. It is eight strength. Or that is amazingly a fit hard for people to One thing through. we haven't talked about on any of these ice, uh, all three of the basic, uh, the Nebula, the Wormhole, and the Asteroid Belts are all two influence, mm -hmm. and this one is only three. Yep. So you can run like sets of these you pretty could, yeah. well. You could insert them into other decks if you yeah. really wanted to. Um, I, I think it's great. Uh, like again, this screams blue sun all over it as well because I'll res the fifteen cost piece of ice yep. and then I will take my money next turn. Thank you yep. very much. So, um, yeah. especially that, this thing is freaking murderous if they don't have like they can break it with any breaker, but they're going broke doing it early game. Yeah, yeah. even late game it's still expensive. Yeah. yeah. So, you're up, sir. Oh, it's me. I got I got a cool piece of ice. You do? Um, I'm not sure what the picture is, but anyway, it's called Builder. Uh, Builder is a two cost four strength code gate. Uh, it has a click ability and two subroutines. Uh, the click ability says, move this piece of ice to the outermost position protecting any server. Uh, and the two subroutines it has say, place one advancement token on a piece of ice protecting the server that can be advanced. <laughs> so, yeah, this guy moves himself out to the end of a server, uh, and then when the runner hits it and doesn't break it, uh, he adds two, sub or adds two advancement tokens to anything that's uh, yep. inside that server um, that can be advanced. So he's reduced, you know, if they hit this guy once, they reduce the cost on your next ice. If it's one of the previous ones, by six, mm -hmm. or they bump the strength on your uh, your ice wall by two, or it's amazing. And or they've changed. Your they were super smart to put the click ability in there. That's one of the things I was going to yep. say. Gen um, early Jinteki. Chum, Chum should have a click ability. Yeah. Chum, Whirlpool, all these ice that has to be in the front of your server should have this. So you're telling them, you can see that they're learning. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, hey, it, it we, makes this thing way more versatile. I mean, how can we make these those previous ice better? By doing that mechanic, yeah. and you know, this also creates an interesting math problem for the runner too, because you know what runners are going to do? They're going to hit this, and they're going to go. Now I got to figure out how much it's going to cost me to get through whatever's behind it if it gets advanced, and how many of these subroutines do I have to break yeah. to get through it? And then they're like, "Oh, I'm making them cheaper, so now they can res it." Yeah. No. And if you're running um, Trick of Light, you're just oh here here yep. have the tokens for your next Trick of Light. Uh, and again, Code Gate that's four strength. Yes. Well, Fantastic. Oh, it's me. Checkpoint. Uh, it's, it's a code gate, trace, illicit, seven strength. Um, when you res checkpoint, take one bad publicity. As one subroutine, trace five. If successful, do three meets of damage when this run is successful. This is so good. If successful, do three meets if the run is successful. This is so good, and it's um, only two influence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this ends up in NBN every day now. Um, so the res cost to the strength is huge. Like that's awesome. Seven strength is amazing. Yes. Yeah. And I think, yeah, even Jinteki will see this. So here's the deal. You get this early enough in the game, you will land this. Like, th there's no way you won't. Nobody's going to be able to break a seven strength code gate that early nine times out of ten. 
And they're not, at least if they do, it's going to be super expensive. Yep. And a Trace 5, like, that's big news. Like, even if the runner beats the Trace, you've still taxed him at least five credits. At least five credits. I, I would not be surprised My to see you win this. If they, really they don't beat the Trace, they're probably jacking out. Yeah. My question is, if they jack out prior to uh, accessing, the runner's taxes are successful. Uh, that is correct. So they don't get hit by the three. So they the don't runner, get hit by it, but they don't get their runs. They don't get to make their run. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you, you hit a click. Yeah. So. Uh, and if they do make the run, I believe the successful thing will trigger before they access cards. Yep. Yeah. So, so. Eh, because I'm as a runner, I spin a click. You spend four credits as the corp. You gave me a bad publicity. And, you, uh, you, you know, I can check. You don't earn the bad publicity credit right then and there, though. No, you know, but, but for yeah. the future oh, runs. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm for saying. future runs. So, for just, you know, stopping me once, I don't know. It's. I always run heavy on bad publicity because the stuff that's <laughs> to you is awesome. So, it's interesting. Uh, is this me again? And no, it's strange. Uh, yep. Uh, next up is Firewall. It is another Wayland Barrier. Go figure. There we go. Uh, five costs to res, five strength. Uh, really cool. Firewall can be advanced and gains plus one strength for each advancement token on it, and it's end the run. This is Icewall's big brother, hence yep. the Firewall. Um, what can you say about it? It's, it's going to be good. You're going to see the Wayland X. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bigger strength, a little bit more influence cost. That's, yeah. It's Icewall's. Oh, how much is it? It's two, it's two, two influence. influence. One, but... More advanceable <coughs> ice? Give me more. Sure. I get these funky ice. All right. Uh, up next, we got Searchlight. Searchlight is a one cost to res, three strength, Sentry, Tracer, Observer. I don't think we've seen an Observer nope, before. Nope. I think this is the first Observer ice. That's cool. I got the first Observer score. Uh, Searchlight can be advanced. Uh, X is the number of advancement tokens on Searchlight. Wow. Really and it has two subroutines that say Trace X. If successful, give the runner one tag. So as you advance this, the Trace gets harder and harder for them to beat. And it has two of that has two trace subroutines on it. So the cool thing about this is, is you can run this in just about any Wayland deck, and just consistently advance it. And if nothing else, it sits as a trick of light battery. And if you do get to land it, then you're gonna get your tags for your tag and bag. My only problem with it: three cost sentry or uh, true. You know the three strength sentry is getting broken by mimic. It's getting broken by everything. Pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, which means, yeah, it, uh, but again, this is probably an early an early piece of ice. Yeah. And we have a uh, lot of program trashing now in Wayland, so, true. you know. Uh, and also, one influence cost, yep. which means yep. you won't just see it in Wayland. And the thing is, even if if uh, I viewed this as uh, Wayland's um, pup, yeah. one cost is going to cost me two credits to break. Yeah. If nothing else, it's a taxi it's, piece of ice. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, it start, well, it starts out as a trace zero, so... But if they're going to break it. Oh, if they're going to break yeah. it, yeah. And yeah. Wayland has a lot of money, so most yeah. of the time they're going to... Well, they can, they can pump that trace up wherever yeah. they want to, but yeah. So it's kind of their version of the That's pump. not free money. <laughs> yep, that was you. That was me. This is you. Housekeeping. Oh, man, this is stinky feet. <laughs> um, two cost, operation, current, op, um, gray ops. Um, it's a current. It's three influence. This card cannot be trashed until another current is played or agenda stolen. The first thing the runner installs a card each turn, he... Or she must trash one card from her grip. It's good. It's good. Non-damage damage. damage. Um, exactly. Won't kill this them, is this is like Tree says. Non-damage damage. You know, keep playing your cards. Keep reducing your hand size, so I can see source and scorch you. This is the second you know? best current for the corpse now. Yes, I agree. With uh, enhanced login protocol still being. Number I, one I was gonna say, at very least, it's better than the other Wayland one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the feats is for people who don't get the symbolism. It's dead runners. <laughs> yeah. so used to be called to see if any accounting names. when it was spoiled. <laughs> I was curious to see if there are any oh, names recognized on the toe tags, but I can't really make any. Uh, it's one of the cards John Erickson. False name on it. Oh. If there's a John Erickson out there, congratulations! They have burned you. D they have burned out your house and killed you. <laughs> That's funny. Well, oh, it's on the most. It's on the closest toe tag. Oh, um, that must be the guy that they caught sleeking this guy. <laughs> That Next be, up, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be awesome. Next up, we have Patch. This is a zero cost operation. It is a condition. Um, I don't know how many conditions we have. This may be a new type too. Uh, install Patch on a res piece of ice as a hosted condition counter with the text: "Host ice has plus two strength." Uh, Oversight as I think anything that installs itself. That's probably yeah, is right, a condition. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll never know the answer to this because I doubt FFG will ever tell us. But I have to wonder if the reason why it's an apple that's getting shredded is this FFG not like apple? <laughs> uh, no, I think that's more to say this is a better archer. Because you know there are arrows. Yeah, that, that Several is true. Arrows going that's a good point. Oh, I didn't even wow. think about that. That yeah. is a good point. Because update um, 1.1 fixes some stability issues. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the archer's strength is kind of low. No, it's strength 6. It's strength 6. Oh, no, wait. It's yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love this because a as we were talking about in here with some of these lower cost really good sentries, like, you know, Searchlight, for example, um, the ability to 
spend zero credits, so basically I'm spending a click to get plus two strength is just fantastic. Um, I mean, there's really nothing else to say about it. It's a, it's amazing ability I to think, efficiently get ice up to higher strength. And I no, I think it's the best thing to counter yog. Yeah, it makes yep. your mice unyogable. You know. Um, but so it's not just a silver bullet, which know, is the cool it's, part it's, because it's generic, it makes everything more yes. expensive to get through. Yeah. Basically, it's cost make an ice, make the runner pay extra two credits at each time yeah, they break. At this. least, yeah, at least. Because if you push, some, if they're running some of the the breakers that have weird efficiency breakpoints, yeah. like the ones uh, that give plus three or plus four, then you can push. If you can push them out of one of those efficiency yeah. like now points. you're spending an extra two credits yeah. just to get the strength up. So. At least, yeah. Up next, we got traffic accident because we had to have at least one one of them that didn't have <laughs> damage. <laughs> Uh, traffic accident is a zero cost operation. It's a black ops. Uh, only has one influence cost though, so it's easy to splash. Uh, play only if the runner has at least two tags and, say, and does two meat damage. This is scary. This almost feels more like an NBN card than a than a Wayland yeah. card to me. I agree. The, the two tag like two tags is not something Wayland usually does. Usually it's one tag and you die. I'm really hoping that's the bike from TriMath Contract. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's no way to really. Do that, but that would be so cool. I, mean, I think a lot of I think Wayland. I don't know. I've never very rarely do you get that like more than one tag in Wayland. No, no. Is what I've seen. Um, it depends if you're running like mid season or something like that for your if your you're, tagging. If you're, if you're importing MBN cards to do it, then you're using MBN stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's more MBN flavor wise. Sure, but I mean, but, yeah. if you can land like uh, hey, once they decide to go to searchlight. Go, once they decide to go tag me, then absolutely, this is great. It's better than. I don't know if it's better than Scorch because it only does two, but it's not bad. I don't it's think free. it's better than Scorch. It I think it's designed- changes the math on Scorch though. So the runner knows he's safe when you have less than six credits, right? So if he has tags and you can't get to six credits on any given turn, he knows he's safe because you can't double scorch him. Yep. Scorch and this kills you, though. No. He just does. Four and, four and two. Oh, four, four and two three. is six damage. I, I, you I, I, die. Four, four and two is six. <laughs> so My numbers are bad today. Yeah. If they don't know you have this in your deck, and you as a runner, which I do as a runner, I sit there and yeah. I watch how many credits you have. Will you be able to get to enough to double scorch me on the next turn? If the answer is no, then I don't really care about floating a tag now. But now, if you're floating two tags, you have to now account for the fact they could be running traffic accident, which I think is kind of cool. You know, I think it's designed for more for for splashing out of faction. Yeah, it's I gonna th- be. I, th- I think it's. I think it's gonna for be MBN. Okay. I, think I think it's think designed it's, to go to MBN. I, think, Just, I kind of agree. On it's that. like the uh, the uh, anarch because it, it's less dash. It's, yeah. Why is it in criminal? Just because they didn't want to put it in freaking yeah. <laughs> anarch. Um, they wanted them to spend. Same thing influence. with Gorman Drip. Why Gorman Drip is is criminal instead of anarch? Because they yeah. didn't want to have another free. <laughs> uh, Fires. So, uh, that was you, yep, me. You go out of space. One cost satellite grid. It's an upgrade region, three influence. Each piece of ice protecting this server is considered to have one additional advancement token on it. Huh. Now, if only there were ice that took advantage <coughs> of these extra. <laughs> this <laughs> is amazing tokens. for that archetype. It's going to be amazing. So, one additional. So, from zero goes to one. Yep. Yep. Okay. From one it goes to two, from yeah. two it goes to three, so on and so forth. Wow. This is amazing. How much you want to bet there's going to be some time you have this resed on a server and you've got like Changeling or Lycan or something out there and your opponent says, oh, no advancement counters, so it's uh, Sentry and makes a run at it and you're like, yeah, no, it's cool. It's got, it counts as having an advancement counter. It's like uh, Code Gate. <laughs> or you just res it during the run. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. You can't or right now. just have no advancement ice and just put this behind it. Me as a runner... I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> those, could, those could be cheap space ice. They could be ice walls. Maybe. Now it makes me wonder. They could ne- be firewalls. Maybe. Is that is that space ice that makes them cheaper to res? So now it makes it... I really amazing. need to take... I, I need to go back now and honestly take a look at Woodcutter and see if it could actually become a oh. viable card. Oh my god, it actually gives it a friggin... Uh, you can res it and it does something that turn. Yes, turns. that's what I'm saying. Like... Woodcutter no, is actually... Well, well, Woodcutter might work. Pharaoh still sucks. Yes. Because it's like nine cost, four strength. But Woodcutter, like, I, I wonder if you could actually make Woodcutter what work now. What does Woodcutter do? I don't know. Like, do you remember what, it, what its actual subroutines Doesn't do? Doesn't it do, like, net damage or something? No, it, if, it's, if it's this... Or it well, trashes programs. It does something. I don't remember. I know it actually had a... I'm pretty I sure actually, it has a cool I wanted subroutine. to try to play it at some point, but it's like, <laughs> you had to play it with the stupid... The grid that lets you, like, res ice when you play them, and then you spend advancement counters. This is what's so bad. Is that card is from the core set? No, yeah. it's not. It's from a block. Is it, it's, it's is it from, from a pack? It's from like the third or fourth. It's pack. so bad though that nobody actually knows what it is because it never. I bet you somebody played. does. I'm, no, sure I'm sure they'll put it in the video. Yeah. So. Somebody please link, uh, you know, the card into the. Comments. Our challenge to you viewers is to build a deck where a woodcutter does something cool, <laughs> and then yeah. post it. Yep. So you want me to build a deck with woodcutter in and then set woodcutter on fire halfway through? <laughs> 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 Alright, next up is the Twins. This is a uh, two-cost unique upgrade. They're sysops. They're two to trash. 
Uh, whenever the runner passes a res piece of ice protecting this server, you may reveal and trash another copy of that ice from HQ to force the runner to encounter the piece of ice just passed again. I'm not a huge fan of this because it really seems to only target very specific cards, um, like Fem, for example. I wasn't even listening when you were talking, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I was laughing at the fact that the... Uh, yeah, on a, on a card with two women on it, it says that yeah, the, the flavor text is anything worth doing. Doing is worth doing, doing twice. twice. Yeah. Oh. Yes, 12-year-old mind. Here um, we go. So right now, what cards do we have that pass ice? You have Femme, and you have Inside Job. Inside but job, is that pass, um, is it considered when I break all the stuff? No, breaking you? is breaking, passing is like bypassing. Is like bypassing. Oh, so that's like using Femme, that's using Inside Job. Um, maybe we're going to get more breakers in the future that pass ice some way. Maybe that's but what it is. To me, this I would is. Have to see, I'd have to see a rule because usually it says like it would say bypass, not pass. I guess that's true. I don't, but I don't, I don't know what the hell that's this a, card does. Maybe that's a point. when I weird... read it, I thought it was when they break it, you make them break it again. And that would be cool if that's actually what it does. Yeah. But unfortunately, with the wording on it, I gotta check it's and see. Do you with pass a piece when, of ice when after do they you break it? Users help us. When do they pass ice? Like it's never come up before, right? So I, I've never had to care. Oh. Like, I, I know the game, I'm good at it, it's just, I've never had to care if when I break a piece of ice am I considered to be passing it or not, so... I don't know. We'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could be if really good, knows, or very situational, one of the yeah. two. We're not gonna get back to you, look it up yourself. <laughs> um, but let's be fair, the hard part about this is, though, is you actually have to have a duplicate piece of that ice in your hand. Yeah. Um, this would but actually be grails. really good, I was gonna say, yeah, run this in HP with Foundry, and it could actually be pretty decent, so... And actually, if you really wanna be, yeah, and, and run it with Grails, and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that could be annoying. Grails, or the next silver, the next ice? Yep. The... Alright, next up we got, uh, well actually what happens to the ice... Reveal and trash a yeah. copy of the ice. Okay, so you're trash yeah. ice. You actually want to do that with grills. So, I mean, I guess, okay, so let's look at this way. Let's Never assume mind. that breaking <laughs> does count as passing. What would you really want to use this on? You want to use it on something like Archer, for example, right? So you've got a resed Archer. They break all the subroutines on it. Another, now you say, go do it again. <laughs> that actually sounds really good. Yeah, I mean, that um, would be pretty cool. Janice. Wotan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wotan. That's a, good, that's a good use for extra copies of Wotan if you have them because yeah. it's unique already. Um. um I, I think there's maybe some some combos there that'd be useful, but again, you don't have to have the ice. It'll in your be hand. like interesting, like in in Wayla, in um, um Blue Sun. I over wait. Well, when would no, the oversight we're... work? Problem is, you're not trashing the one that's in play. You're trashing the one you played from your hand. And I said, well, but well, since they broke the ice, then it gets trashed. It would it gets, before it they have it to go second. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Because assuming a pass means they beat it, it's after they've done that. Okay. You do it. Uh, up next, we got sub boost. We're into the neutral cards now, folks. Uh, sub boost is an operation condition. Uh, install sub boost on a resed piece of ice as a hosted condition counter with the text "hosted ice gains barrier" and subroutine and a subroutine that says "end the run" after all of its other subroutines. Um, I think certain factions have been looking for this card for a long time. They're they're called Jinteki. Yeah, MBN oh, to like, some extent. Yeah, MBN to some extent. Um, oh, my neural katana gets an end the run and becomes a barrier too. Cool. Wow. Um, um, I think the barrier, the adding barrier to it, kind of bonus, uh, balances out the fact, so it makes it easier to break, but it adds an extra subroutine that ends the run. Yeah. And so far, from what I can tell, this is not a piece of ice that we have gotten yet either. The artwork. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be Enigma. Is it? That would be my guess by the flavor text. It says uh, it's fun watching them derail. Oh after yeah. I, Enigma. I didn't realize Enigma had giant claws like that, but I guess he um, does. Huh? Well, Enigma is supposed to be a sphinx, which is you know. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's decent. It's decent. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, it, I, I wouldn't it, run if I will run it, but yeah. I like it for I don't know. I like it for adding summer teams. Yeah. <laughs> um, I get the dedicated <laughs> technician technician team. Oh, it's so true. Um, one cost to res. It's an upgrade. One to trash. Two recurring credits. These use these credits to install um, ice protecting the server. Props to my people at the IT crowd. If you know what the quote is. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Oh, no, you, you, God. You, you, you mean it's line number one in the IT handbook? Yes. <laughs> Try turning it off and turning it on again. Yeah. Um, it, it is damn... It, it really concerns me how often that really works. It, it works yeah. a lot of times. No, you'd be surprised. Um, it's good. It's, it's, well, here's, here's the This thing. screams Wayland all over it. Yeah, so it's encouraging you to, to build vertically. Sure. Yeah. Because they're only used to install, but I mean, it's one res and one... And after you've installed two pieces of ice, it's oh, paid install. for itself. Oh, yeah, install, my... not res. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was but it's right one cost. Right. It's one cost. It's one cost, and ah. it's an upgrade. And you know what? They're going to spend one and trash it, or they're going to spend nah, but two that, to trash it take in someone else. A and... space in my deck. Nah. But think about it. If you're building that style of deck where your goal is to play off the grid, 
and just have the most ridiculous two main servers you can possibly get. That starts to pay for itself very quickly in a deck type like that. So I guess you, but you have to make a deck around sure. it. Sure. No, you're not making a deck around that. You're making a deck around building mega servers and one server that's going to be stupidly secure because they'll never be able to yeah, get into it. At which point, that. Is so a valid addition. the math on this is. Uh, once you've installed what two pieces of ice? Yeah, it pays for itself. Yeah. It's the click to install, the one to res, and then you advance. You install two pieces of ice. So no, for so itself. once you're on the third piece, because the first piece doesn't cost you anything to install, then you install two more. Oh, I'm assuming you already have a one deep server. Yeah. yeah. So the, the next two pieces of ice you're going to install are going to have a cost okay. to them, yeah. basically. All right. Uh, last up in the neutrals, we have a uh, Cyberdex Virus Suite. This is a three cost upgrade. It's ambush. Uh, it's one to trash. Uh, if Cyberdex Virus Suite is accessed from R and D, the runner must reveal it. When the runner accesses Cyberdex Virus Suite, you may purge virus counters. You can trash this to also purge virus counters. Um, Silver Bullet card. Uh, it may actually get played, though, because noise is becoming a big problem in the meta right now. Is it, is it better than Cyberdex Trials? Um, yes, because it can be done on the runner's turn. So think about if you're running, right? And you hit this in the middle of a medium hit. True. Yeah. You lose all your tokens, right? So now you're not running medium again that turn with any real counters on it. Um, Plus, also you can install this. Yeah. Have the server protected. Have his medium at five or six. Have him pay through all the access to, before you access. I'll res this, trash it. Yep. You only access one card. So, and that is the only yeah. time where this is actually like near the hub as a because you'll draw a card when you yeah. install it. But that is the only time that this is better than purging because purging is three clicks. This is actually four to get this out into yep. play and spend three to res. Yeah. So you're investing for the future. You're investing yeah. it for the surprise. Nope, no virus counters However, from you. if they just make a run at it and they reveal it, oh, look at that. They accessed it. Purge virus yeah. counters for free. But so cool about this, though, is think about all the shenanigans you can pull off, though, where, like, people rely on, like, data suckers, for example, or yep. parasites, right? So you have an archer resed, and they run at it thinking, oh, they're going to kill it because it's got a parasite and they got data sucker counters on it, and they can't break it any other way. Um, no, and now eat the entire archer to your face. But you have to do this before they encounter the ice. Uh, no, you have to do it. Uh, oh, yes. You're... Because they have priority. Sure, yeah, but they've so already initiated to... the run. Yeah, once they initiate the run, then you have to yeah. do this. Because before if you wait until they encounter yeah. the ice, yep. then you they have priority, yeah. and they will spend the things exactly. before. But hey, they go, I'm making a run. You go, purge. Yeah. So, um, I love it. I like yes. it. Um, so much fl so much flavorful Wayland stuff. And different ways to play Wayland. Yes. And that's what I love. Right yeah. now, I, I'm seeing this. I'm like, oh, there's a couple of decks I already yeah. want to try to they're play. They're not just burning down your house. They're back to yep. building giant servers. They're going into space. It's crazy. Uh, I actually, I was telling Jesus this the other your day. Car down. I think I actually like this box set, even though we haven't done the runner side yet, better than Honor and Profit. No, I agree. It's yeah. the um, best one. There wasn't a lot in Honor and Profit that really got me really excited. This does on My both My biggest sides. problem with Honor and Profit was that they were, like, when you're when you're adding so much to the criminal facts that it was already doing so well, yeah, it felt like they were adding side grade type stuff or even downgrade. This feels like upgrade stuff. Yeah. This is cool stuff. So but the real question becomes, um, is this enough to put Waylon back into the competitive running against NBN? And that's the real question that has to be asked because to my knowledge so far from what I've seen online, people still haven't come up with a a reasonably high win chance deck to beat NBN Fast Advance still. Yeah. And until that happens, it really makes you wonder if outside of a friendly meta, you know, maybe a local store tournament or something like that, like at a national level though, will you still see NBN as a predominant faction? And I think the answer is yes right now. Oh, yeah, this point, yes, yeah. you will. A um, couple of things also before we, I, I, I comment on that. Um, we, we have noticed that there's been a progression as the game evolves that each deluxe has got better and better. Yep. You yeah. know? Um, I don't know that I would call... Uh, I think I think Creation Control was better, was better. than Honor Profit. Really? Um, as a whole, I think the... I think because Honor Profit did great for, for Jinteki. I think, yeah, I think Jinteki made out you very know. well out of Honor and Profit, but I think both HB and... Um, HB didn't get that much from me, did it? I felt they did. Oh, okay. I can't um, the, on Honor your Profit. point of view, on your comment about uh, MBN, I don't know if you have noticed, they just had a, a big tournament uh, they do... Chilo. Trilo. And they restricted and Astro. And they restricted Astro. To one card. To one per deck. Yep. Really? The yes. Trilo guys had so much of a prize pool on the line that they did not want people showing up and being very frustrated playing the game because if you look at everything online right now, outside of the high-ranking players, everybody has said that something needs to be done about Astro Script because it's yep. taken all the fun out of playing the game. Yeah. And Trilo sat down. They said, look, we're putting on this huge tournament. Tons of people are coming. I think it was 90? Something. No, it was, it was big. And they said, you know what? We want this to be a fun experience for our players. Astroscope's one per deck. Yeah. 
Yep. They did what FFG is not willing to do right now, yep. which is they finally and put a restricted we'll card. And I, I, I yeah. thought it was going to gen- generate people not showing up for it. Yep. You know, but I, no, I, they I, had I think big... you know more people. I think at that point yep. you have more people show up and less people showing up playing NBN. Yeah. So I'm curious if um, by them Chilo doing this put the pressure on FFG now to do something about it. But we'll see. We don't know. Yep. So. This is the corp, um, and then um, so strong, so good. See us in part two for the runners, and um, anything else? Mm-hmm. Show see me your woodcutter decks. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, guys. I'll see you in the next one.